Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm gonna show you how to boot your Raspberry Pi from an SSD or an external drive super easy using Berry Boot. Now, this is basically a Berry Boot tutorial, so if you just wanna use your micro SD card, you can, but I would recommend using some type of external drive. What I have here is a one terabyte RAV Power external SSD, super quick. It'll hold a ton of different operating systems and it works amazingly with the Raspberry Pi 4. Now, when it comes to booting from an external drive using Berry Boot, you will still have to have your micro SD card inserted into your Pi. All the booting will happen from the micro SD card, but your operating system will be running from an SSD or whatever external drive you choose. So Berry Boot is awesome, but they have a very limited selection of operating systems that we can download. So I would recommend grabbing another USB drive so we can throw custom operating systems on here and get them up and running on our Raspberry Pi using an external drive or your micro SD card. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Berry Boot so we can run multiple operating systems from a single micro SD card or an external drive like an SSD or an external USB drive. The items I'm going to be using for this tutorial are a Raspberry Pi 4. This also works on the 2, 3, or 3B+, Plus, but I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4 8GB model. An external drive of some sort, I would recommend an SSD. You could use a mechanical drive if you want to, or even a USB drive, but you're going to get the best speeds out of an SSD. A micro SD card for running Berry Boot, and like I mentioned, we still have to have this in even though we're booting from the SSD. All the boot files will be contained on the micro SD. And finally, a separate USB drive so we can load custom operating systems into Berry Boot. Unfortunately, this is just the way it works right now, but if you're content with what Berry Boot has to offer, you will not need this. So now it's time to jump right into the tutorial. I'm gonna be using a Windows 10 PC, but this will also work on Mac or Linux. Okay, so the first thing we need to do to get our SD card ready is make sure we have a proper SD card. This is just a little 16 gigabyte SAN disk properties and I have it formatted FAT32. That's really all we need to do to the SD card. Next thing we need to do is download Berry Boot. So there's a couple of versions available. This is for the Raspberry Pi 4, and this one, the updated version does work for the Raspberry Pi 4 8 gigabyte model and all of the other ones. If you're looking to use Berry Boot on a different Raspberry Pi, you can download this version here. All links mentioned in this video will be in the description. We're gonna go ahead and let this download. Now, like I said at the beginning, this is going to connect to the Berry Boot server when it's all set up on the Raspberry Pi. And there's a few operating systems that we can download. But if you want to add your own operating system that's not listed, you'll need an extra USB drive formatted FAT32. And I recommend heading over to this website here. These are highly compressed images for the Raspberry Pi that you can transfer over to your FAT32 formatted USB drive. And we can load them up while we have Berry Boot going on the Raspberry Pi. We'll need that extra USB drive to do this. But there's a lot of stuff here. And one of the big reasons you want to use this is, for instance, if we got Twister OS from the official website and extracted it, I think it's around 8 gigs. First of all, it wouldn't fit on our FAT32 formatted USB drive. And second of all, it's not formatted correctly to work with Berry Boot. It has to be in the Squash format. And these images here on Berry server are set up in Squash, so they work with Berry Boot. So if you download this one here, it's only 2.8 gigs extracted. Same exact image, it's just highly compressed, and we can place it on that USB drive very easily. So we got Berry Boot downloaded. We're gonna head to our downloads, and I've also downloaded the Twister OS image that I just showed you, the highly compressed version. We're gonna extract Berry Boot. We're just gonna extract it to its own folder. I'm gonna snap this over to the right-hand side, and I'm also gonna open up my SD card. Remember, this is also formatted FAT32. I'm going to open in a new window, snap it to the left hand side, open up the Berry Boot folder we just extracted, take everything out of here, and place it on our micro SD card. It's going to go ahead and transfer over. Berry Boot does not have to be flashed to the SD card for it to work. You just transfer the files over. So we now have our Berry Boot SD card ready to go. We can actually boot this up in our Raspberry Pi. But like I said, we also have some images that just aren't going to be available from the Berry Boot server like Twister OS. I'm just gonna right click on this and I'm gonna extract it to its own folder. I'm gonna remove my micro SD card from my PC and I'm gonna place my 32 gigabyte USB drive in there. Now this is totally optional, only if you wanna add extra operating systems. So I have my USB drive inserted into my PC and I've actually already added one operating system. This is Raspberry Pi OS 
but it's the 64-bit version, so I can run it on the Raspberry Pi 4 8GB model. Let's go ahead and transfer that highly compressed version of Twister OS. We're just going to place it right on our USB drive and let this finish up. Once this is done, we can move over to our Raspberry Pi, boot it from the Berry Boot SD card that we just set up, and get everything installed. Okay, so Berry Boot is starting up on my Raspberry Pi 4. It's actually really fast. It'll bring us right to kind of a little setup menu. All right, it boots up really quick. This is gonna be our little welcome center here. Do you see green borders at the top and bottom of the screen? Yes, so I'm gonna disable overscan. You can set up a wired connection. So if you're on ethernet, you really don't have to do anything, but I'm gonna go Wi-Fi with it. It's gonna auto detect my Wi-Fi country, US. America, New York, make sure this is correct. We'll click OK. Now it's going to bring up a list of my Wi-Fi networks. We'll put in our password. Once we're set up, it's going to ask us to select a destination drive. Now you can always install these operating systems to your micro SD card, just like you would flash it with Etcher or the Raspberry Pi Imager. But personally, I like using Berry Boot for an SSD. Now you will still have to have a micro SD card inserted into your Pi, to work with the boot files, but the whole operating system itself will be running from an SSD or a USB drive. It just makes everything so much faster. So if you just want to install to your micro SD card, choose your micro SD card. If you have a USB drive or an external hard drive or SSD, go ahead and plug it in now. I'm using that RAV Power one terabyte drive. It came up as disk 00. I already have this formatted ext4 but it should show up like this. It will wipe the whole drive. You need a clean drive for this to work. We need to format it ext4. I'm gonna choose format. It's now formatting my external SSD. And for some reason, I always get an error when unmounting, but everything was successful. We'll click close. And it's gonna bring us to this menu, install your operating system. Now these are the ones available from the Berry Boot server. We have Debian Buster, Raspbian. As you can see, these are a bit old and hopefully they're updated. We also have Manjaro, we can go to Appliances, Knock PS, we have Puppy Linux, Raspbian Lite, Ubuntu Server, and a few others. Now for me, I wanted to install a custom operating system or a different operating system that's not listed here. So I'm going to choose Cancel, it's going to ask us to reboot, we'll click OK to reboot and it'll bring us right back to the main menu. Once we reboot, we'll be brought to the Berry Boot menu editor. Add OS. It's going to bring us here again to the server. We'll click cancel. We're going to plug in the USB drive that we added our custom operating systems to. I'm going to go ahead and plug it into one of the USB 3.0 ports on my Raspberry Pi 4. We're just going to do a long left press on our mouse with add OS and copy OS from USB stick. It's reading my USB stick. And as you can see, we have my Raspberry Pi OS 64 bit version. And we also have Twister OS. I'm going to go with Twister OS, choose Open, and it's now going to copy that image to my SSD. If you have it set up for micro SD card, it'll copy it to the micro SD card. As you can see, we have Twister OS here, and this is on my SSD. I have one terabyte of storage. So this is a single operating system that I have right now. I'm going to add one more while we're here. I'll go to Add OS. I'm going to go with Manjaro. We'll click OK. It's now going to connect online. It's going to download Manjaro for us and set it up. So give this some time to finish up. And now we have two operating systems on our external drive or your micro SD card if you chose to use that. I'm going to set Twister OS as my default. I'm going to choose Exit. It's going to reboot. And every time we boot up, it's going to give us a little countdown. You can choose an operating system from here to stop the countdown. I set my default as Twister OS, so it's going to boot this every time. But if you want to edit that, you can go to Edit Menu, set your other operating system as your default. Now I'm just going to go ahead and boot Twister OS. And this is now running from my external SSD. Super quick to get here. I'm going to go ahead and sign in.
And I can definitely tell the difference between this running on a micro SD card and an SSD. It's just a lot quicker. We're going to open up a file explorer. If you take a look right here, our free space is 950 gigabytes. So this operating system is running from my SSD. Now I'm going to go back and we're going to start up Manjaro. So I'll just shut this down. And if you're wanting to boot your other operating system, make sure you catch it before the countdown finishes up. We'll go with Manjaro and boot. And there it is. We're now running a different operating system from our SSD. I mean, these are side by side, still running off that one terabyte drive, but I can install multiple operating systems and choose which one I want to boot automatically. So yeah, it's really easy to set up, and I think this is an awesome little application for running multiple operating systems on your Raspberry Pi, and allowing you to run your favorite operating system from an SSD. Really appreciate you watching. I will leave links to everything I mentioned in this video in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.